There's a big one, I think. Let me see. Oh, God! That was a better one he pulled off. Golly. All right, let's put this spot lock on. Show you how this thing works. This brand new Minn Kota spot lock. Um, basically, you want to put your pedal straight on. It's got a little anchor symbol. And all you do is hit that button. And that thing is going to keep you locked in that position. It's going to self-adjust. We're going to see the, the head of the motor. It's adjusting all by itself. Uh oh, big one. There's a giant. Stay on there. It's either two or it's a giant. Oh my gosh, this is, this is a heavy fish. Let's see. It's a giant. 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 A key spot lock feature right there. We backed up on the school. Oh my God. Big one. Big one. Another four and a half pounder. Golly. All down his throat, man. Oh, big fish. Look at the size of this thing. Here he comes. Got him in here. All right. They're three and a half pound. I thought it was bigger than that. It's a good one, though. Look, once again, God, I got to show you. Look. One, two, three. Three of the six points in his face. You heard me say it before on the Bassmaster Elite Trail. I'm going to say it again for Tackle Warehouse Vlog. DT in his face. In his face. It's a good one. Three and a half pounder. When these fish are schooling, you want to get back in as soon as you can because the school actually gets fired up. When one, when one fish gets caught, the up. There's another one! Yeah! Yeah! When one fish gets caught, it fires the school up and they get competitive. These largemouth are so competitive that. That's a good one, too. Got another good one. Golly, got him in here. Another one, look. One, two, three, four, four of the six in his face. When you got these fish fired up, keep throwing back. Keep throwing back. Keep that school fired up. When the school decompresses, that's when you want to switch baits. We're going to keep firing this. As it slows down a little bit here in a couple minutes, we're going to pick up a different style bait. A football jig, uh, a big worm, a Carolina rig, and we'll continue to activate the school. Another good one right there. Boy, this is sick. Go back out. Watch this. I'll just stay on my knees. Watch this. I won't even stand up. This is how confident I am I'm going to get bit. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Throw me. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Go back out. Stay on my knees. These poor guys got to just watch this onslaught, huh? Poor guys. Huh. He come off. Wow. A lot of swipes on that one. Hydrilla. What is this? It must be as big as the crankbait. Just come off. It was the little. It's funny how they're all mixed though by size. There's, there's little ones, there's medium ones, there's big ones. A lot of times when you get to school like this, they they school by size, but not today. Today they're they're very mixed. We've got big ones and little ones and medium ones all living together in perfect harmony out here. Oh, oh God. They're starting to get a little wise. This is that period I'm telling you when it starts to slow down a little bit, you're gonna make a change. We're gonna do that here in a second. Maybe a five more cast and we're gonna to change to a totally different bait. We're gonna to change to a football head jig and we're gonna reactivate that school by using a different bait. Try to catch one or two more maybe on this crankbait and then we'll switch up. Notice, look, still in the same spot. Spot lock has held me here the, enti the entire time. Okay. Here's one. Okay. That's 
smaller. But look at the crankbait. It's completely in his face. You're fishing the right color. Great, great little lesson there about picking crankbait color. You know, if all these fish were hooked poorly, I would immediately switch to something that's totally opposite. This is a Caribbean shad, chartreuse blueback. Would be a good move. It's in a different color palette. And then you want to look and see how they're hooked on that bait. And then you just keep adjusting your, your, your crankbaits, you know? Boy, this is, this is my favorite way to catch them, man. I, I, I like a lot of things. I like flipping a jig. I like fishing a spinning rod. But there's nothing I'd rather do than fish offshore with a crankbait. This to me is the ultimate fun, man. It's a challenge to find these little spots, you know? We, we got lucky on this one and pulled right up on it. A lot of times you gotta work hard and find them, but we had good timing with this spot. Let's take one more cast here and we'll see. You know, the equipment we're using, the rod and reel we're using for this crankbait technique is really critical to this whole system. Um, you know, you really can't just use any rod when you're fishing off the bank like this, like we're doing with this big crankbait. You know, again, we're throwing a DT-14, and uh, one of the key things to this bait is making a long cast. That lets the bait achieve maximum diving depth, and um, so the rod is real key. We're using a rod that I designed for Abu Garcia. This is the Ike Series rod, and I designed this rod especially for what we're doing here. Big crankbaits, long cast. And this is a 710 rod. It's really long, but here's the main thing I want to show you. In addition to being long, this rod is composite. It's a mix of, of glass and graphite, and look at how soft this rod is. It's very, very soft. It's very, very parabolic. And what that really soft parabolic composite rod does is it lets you launch that crankbait. You know, the other great thing about composite and having a soft action is that when that fish hits, it adds a little bit of a delay. And then when they're hooked, you got a lot better chance of landing them because that tip gives to the fish. You know, the other key part is the reel and the line. And when I'm cranking, especially deep cranking, I like going to a reel with a slower gear ratio. Uh, this is the Abu Garcia Revo Premier, but it's in a six, four to one. Whenever you're deep cranking, get away from that super high gear ratio, the eights, the nines. Go to a seven to one or lower. Six, four is a great retrieve speed. And then, you know, finally, it's the line. And for me, the ultimate line to fish a crankbait with when you're fishing it off the bank like this is fluorocarbon. Um, fluorocarbon's dense. A dense sinking line lets the bait get deeper and will give that crankbait better action. And we're using 12 pound, 100% Berkeley Trilene fluorocarbon. So the bait is key, the area is key, but it's a system and the rod and reel or line are just as important. You know, the fish uh, finally compressed a little bit. They slowed down. We started here, we found this school, it was, every other cast on a crankbait, DT-14. And when the school compresses, I put that bait down and I start to pick up different styles of lures. So we picked up a football jig. This is a three quarter ounce missile, a headbanger jig. We've got a Berkeley green pumpkin trigger crawl in the back and we're gonna attempt to reactivate the school. You know, stroking a jig uh, has got real popular in Texas on lakes like Kentucky, Barkley Lakes, Gunnersville, Ledge Lakes. It's, it's a real good technique. And guys have different ways to stroke it. And one of the things that I love to do is I like to make bottom contact, but once it's bottom contact, I'll actually take my hand off the reel handle and I'll pop the bottom of the rod. So I, I'm actually stroking with my rod, but I'm giving it some additional lift by using the bottom of my hand. Uh, it looks really awkward, but it gives that bait a lot more momentum and a lot of times will trigger a reaction strike. <laughs> That's so fun. I love when you find them piled up, there's nothing better, man. Yeah, one smacked it right there. I missed it. Finally get a bite. This is my third or fourth cast in there. It's real scattered. 
it's real scattered. I mean, I think like every, probably every 10th cast I feel a little bit. A lot of times that's good, you know, if it's so thick that you can't even get a bait through it, you know, a lot of times that little sparse stuff is, is better, you know. But you know, that's so key to this spot, like that first sandbar one we stopped on didn't have anything on it and you know, you have to have something. It's got to be a little grass, got to be an isolated rock, an isolated stump, you know, a piece of brush, something out there has got to be. In the fall, it's different, but in the spring you got to have you gotta have something there, you know. That's a good move, because there's another one on that side. I, I, I would do that, that's a good move. Go! That's the deal. I went this slow that time, and I had one absolutely crush it and miss it. I mean, he never touched it, it's almost like he just headbutted it, you know. That's the thing that's great about the crankbait. If they try headbutting it, you got them, you know. A big single hook like this, with a, especially with a weed guard on it, you don't get those head butters. You get the eaters, you don't get the head butters. This, this may not be as enough of a shad imitation for them. You know, it's kind of more of a crawfish pattern. I mean, this is crazy. This is one point. You know, there are 50 more of these from here to the bridge. That's kind of scary. I'm not saying everyone's got them on it, but we got a lot more ground to cover today. There he goes. Big one on football, Jake. Yeah, now it's a decent one. I finally got one to bite. That might be the start of what we needed to reactivate the fish. This is what I mean when they stop hitting one bait, you switch up. And there we went to, caught all those fish on a DT-14. And there we switched to a football head style jig. This is a missile. It's called a head banger, three quarter ounce. It's green pumpkin. And you know, one of my favorite trailers almost all year round, except for the very cold period, is a chigger crawl. Uh, it's a four inch green pumpkin chigger crawl. I want to show you one of the unique things about this, this bait is the head shape. And um, you know, it's really more of a broad football head style, a diamond shaped head. And those broad shoulders on that head help keep it upright and help keep it from snagging into the bottom. If you're around gravel or rock or boulders or even scattered grass like we have here, those shoulders will protect the bait from getting snagged and hung up. And that's, a, that's key when you're fishing deep. Fire back out there real quick and see. Sometimes you just need that first bite. You know, those things are, are great indicators of where the bait's at. Those loons are always around bait. They're some of the baddest bird hunters for, for shad and herring and gizzard shad. So when you see a loon like that, it's a really good sign. Let's see if that lover will spark them back up. This is a cross between a swim bait and a vibrating jig. Um, a lot of you uh, Tackle Warehouse fans know I, I've been using the lover for a lot of years. And traditional sizes in the lover is 3 8 and half ounce. But this is called a lover magnum. This is a big one ounce size. For fishing for big fish or deeper water off the bank, this can be a great alternative to a, to a jig or a crankbait or something. And uh, you get some big bites with this lure. It's really big. It's got a single hook on the back and I like to put a swim bait on the back. I've got a Berkeley rib shad on the back of this one. and Really big profile. So you cut out some of them smaller bites you're gonna get. Show you this thing, it's really big profile. It's got that big lover reverse shovel lip is what we call it. It's got a really big uh, five aught, really strong hook on it. And then again, that's a Berkeley power rib shad, power bait rib shad on the back. And it just looks like a big shad, you know? I'm going back to the, to the money maker, folks. I think we've just wore on this school too much. There's one. That's a big one too, unless it's snagged. I don't know if he's, no, he's snagged in face. That's a little one just snagged. 
that a spot? That's a spot. Look at that. That's a spot of bass. It's not something you see every day. He a little football though, look at him. Spotted bass. Indicator, little patch of, patch of teeth on the tongue there. Rough spot on the tongue. Different bar pattern on the fish. Really pretty fish, man. Gorgeous. That big, God, I just had another one like come off. That's a big crappie right there. Uh oh, see that? Now that's that's good. Now I know there's some stumps out there too. It, to me, it's like swim baiting, man. It's like addicting. Like you don't want to do nothing else, man. There could be a flip bite, a frog bite going on, and you just I ignore it. Don't even want to. Don't even want to look at it. See, it's funny where we caught all those fish was like a crotch, like the they made a corner right there. Because right here, back there it was 13, and I'm in 10, so this, this kind of comes way out. I just want to show you guys a real quick look at what the sweet spot was, and there's always a sweet spot. And if you look, we've got a giant secondary point that sticks out here, and that's a secondary point leading out to the main lake. You know, traditionally you'd think those fish would be on the very tip of it, but if you look at where the school was at, we laid some waypoints down, they're actually in a turn in front of that point, uh, on the front side. And it's where the deepest water touches it before it heads out to the main lake. So when you're out here fishing these spots, keep an open mind. Don't always fish the tip of that secondary point. Fish the sides, fish the crotch, fish where that deep water touches, and a lot of times the school will be in those areas. Thanks for watching this Tackle Warehouse vlog. As always, the great gear you saw me catch all those fish on, it's available at Tackle Warehouse. And don't forget, like, share, and tag a buddy for your chance to win great prizes.